You can hire a professional to install your subwoofer. But a professional will cost some money to hire while saving you the time and stress of figuring out the procedure for placement. Also, a professional will be able to work around the technical details to set up your subwoofer with quality sound. But you may prefer to place your subwoofer by yourself in your home. Installing a subwoofer is a good way to challenge your self-professed love for good sound. For your home subwoofer, here's how to go about the installation. To install a subwoofer in your home, you should consider where you want to place the sub. This reason is that the base frequencies of your subwoofer will respond to the varying conditions of the room where you place it. And one of those conditions is the wall. As the sound waves from the base are reflected through the room, you may come up with two challenges. One is standing waves and the other is base nulls. The problem of standing waves arises if a lot of base energy is reflected throughout the room. This is as a result of the wall's ability to strengthen a specific low frequency so much that it creates a resonance that is annoying at best. This makes it look like the base is jammed to a tone without structure. On the other hand, the challenge presented by base nulls is that of waves neutralizing each other as they bounce through the room. The effect of this is that you end up with incomplete audio. There are a number of ways to tackle these flaws. One is to set up some acoustical treatment to fill up the reflective issues. Software like an equalizer can also be used to fill up the dents. However, a good place to begin is to try placing the subwoofer in the right spot. Where is the right place to place your subwoofer in your home? You probably heard of how much more sound your bass woofer produces when boxed into a corner or placed close to a wall. Of course, this is because walls generally reinforce any object that bounces on it, including sound. As much as this is true, the reinforced sound might just be very crappy since more doesn't always imply better. In practical terms, assuming you got a sub that has tiny drivers plus low power handling capacity. You might just consider positioning the sub close to a wall so that you can improve the bass sound it produces. However, the wall may just worsen the sound instead of improving it. This is to say that the wall isn't the answer to the problem. So, there has to be some better way to position your subwoofer. First, you should consider that the size of your subwoofer driver matters during the installation process. You need a sub with a sizable driver and a robust amplifier. It'll perform better away from the wall and closer to the main loudspeakers. Keeping this sub close to the input sources improves delay from timing and cancelling out. Some manufacturers will even state the best position for your subwoofer if you are buying a ready-made one off the market. If you don't intend to take the manufacturer's advice or you are trying to place your DIY subwoofer. Here's a procedure that will produce the right result for you. You need a bit of patience here to place your sub at the spot where it will produce the best sound. You want to consider enlisting the help of a willing dear friend. This procedure requires that you move your favorite sitting chair from its position since this will most likely be the position you listen to your music from. Then place your subwoofer in the position of that chair you moved. Next, play some music that you are very familiar with on your sub. This music should have sufficiently heavy bass notes. The essence of playing this music is to get the full feel of your sub's output ability at different points of the room. While the music is playing, move around the room and mark the points where the notes are smoothest and deepest. Use tape or something to identify them while you return the chair to its position. Now, move your sub to those positions you marked off and listen to the sound it produces at those points from your chair. While you listen, you'll be able to find the most suitable spot to keep the sub. If moving your chair is too much of a bother, you can take an alternative procedure. Check out the wall closest to the main output system and the input system. Measure the distance from the said wall to the one opposite and mark out one third of this distance. Place your subwoofer in this position. This position should be able to greatly reduce the effect that standing waves and bass nulls have. What if you already got a small-sized sub? Well, the best spot to place it is still in a corner or close to the wall. You might as well take care of those boomy sounds with these ideas. 
Ported Box If your subwoofer box has a port behind, then fill it in with tennis or rubber balls or some socks that you don't use anymore. Stuffing the box will reduce the chances of sound bouncing on the wall. You may find a sub that is designed to be fixed in the wall, though they tend to be pricey. If a sub isn't built for the wall, you want to avoid placing it on the wall. However, one place to never place your sub is in a closed space. You end up limiting its ability to produce a multi-directional sound which is what it is specifically built for. How to connect to your input device. When you connect your subwoofer to the home theater or gaming device, the control panel that makes the process efficient is the audio video receiver AVR. With the AVR, you can link all your sound from the production point and transfer them to the speakers. These include sound from your game console, turntable, DVD player, etc. In essence, you will have to pass your subwoofer into the AVR when you've identified the best spot for it. For most AVRs, the subwoofer port can easily be spotted on the panel behind denoted by a name like subwoofer out. Some AVRs may carry more than one port of subwoofers. In older AVR systems, you have to connect the subwoofer directly to the receiver using its speaker wire to link to the subwoofer out on the AVR's speaker terminal. However, in more recent AVRs, you need a cable connection like the RCA to link the subwoofer and the AVR. One important factor to note when making these connections is the type of wire you use. They should be designed for use on subwoofers because that ensures that the sound sent to your sub is as clean as possible. Some AVRs are designed to automatically reset the speaker connection in the room once your setup is done well. However, if you find that yours does not automatically update then check the setup panel and do the setup yourself. If you can't figure out how best to go about this, consider enlisting the services of a pro as the manual setup tends to be a bit complex. In a nutshell, placing your subwoofer is a bit tricky but a fun challenge. Be sure you have the time before you begin the process because it might take hours to complete this project. You sure will have a jolly, good time, especially if you invite a friend over. If you've enjoyed this video, click the subscribe button below. Hit the notification bell so you'll know once we post a new video. Also, drop a comment below so we can know your thoughts. Finally, don't forget to check the description below for more details. Visit our site zimsubwoofers.com for more awesome subwoofer tips like this.